Hello, I'm Sarah Allen and welcome to The Pitch. Today, I'm joined by Mark Powell, Head of Income Credit from Qualitas. We're going to be talking about real estate private credit. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Sarah. Delighted to be here. So to begin with, tell me about real estate private credit. How large is the market? Real estate private credit, uh, what we're talking about is really providing loans to property investors and developers in, in the commercial space. Um, and, and when we're talking about that commercial space, it's across all sectors. So it's, it's loans uh, for commercial office, for retail, for high density residential, so residential apartment developments, industrial and other specialised asset classes. But in terms, of, in terms of how large the market is, like, in one word, it's enormous. Um, so if you look at the Australian commercial real estate market, it's $437 billion. Um, and it's been growing strongly over the past decade. So if you look at the, the compound rate of growth over that 10 year period, it's running at about 6% per annum. Okay, and what are some of the key drivers in this space? There's a number of, number of drivers. If you think about the physical real estate market, um, that's undergoing a, a material amount of growth. And, and that growth is really underpinned by the whole population growth story here in Australia. And, and that's been well reported in the press in, in terms of the extent of that population growth. So what that means is, is it creates demand for real estate. So you need more dwellings for people to live in, you need more shopping centres, you need more industrial facilities, you need... So, so there's the demand for that underlying real estate. Where there's a demand, capital will generally follow that um, to assist with the development of, of, that sort of, uh, of those sort of projects. And, and when we're saying capital will follow it, the interesting piece that's playing out in the market at the moment is there's some very significant structural change going on in the real estate debt markets. And, and that structural change is what we're seeing by way of the banks who really once dominated the sector. Uh, if we go back, once again, 10 years ago, their market share was circa 87% or, or thereabouts, a really dominant position. Um, However, they've been a seeding market share on a year-by-year -year basis. So that market share is now down to around about 72%. And, and that hasn't happened by accident. Um, it's been the regulator uh, has, want, has been, um, uh, as part, sort of post GFC, what the regulator wanted to do is de-risk the banks as much as they possibly could to ensure that the, the banking system could withstand further external shocks, a la GFC Mark II or whatever might be around the corner. Um, so part of the lever they pulled on there um, was to de-weight the, the bank's exposure to commercial real estate and actually narrow the sandbox that they can, that they can participate in. So by virtue of doing that, what it's meant is it's created a very substantial capital gap in the marketplace. And that capital gap is essentially being filled by private credit. Um, and the, the institutions, particularly offshore institutional capital, who have participated in these markets in other parts of the world, are finding Australia a really attractive destination to invest in. Okay, I might get you to discuss that a bit more. So what does make Australia so appealing to offshore investors? Yeah, it's a number of things. I mean, if you, if you think about Australia, it, it provides a really good entry point into the APAC region. Um, so if you think about a global investor and they've got various choices, whether it's the US or Europe or, or Asia, um, Australia and, and the APAC region more generally um, uh, doesn't necessarily cor correlate really closely to what's going on in the US and Europe from an economic and geopolitical perspective. So in that, in that sense, it provides some good diversification for those investors. And then if they're coming into APAC, you go, okay, where are you going to invest in, in the region? And Australia is just a really attractive destination. If you, if you think about our, our rule of law here, it's quite, um, it's quite lender or investor friendly um, in a security sense. Um, the actual market itself has got the second highest GDP per capita in the APAC region. Um, the real estate, the physical market here is the sixth most traded market globally as well. So there's a number of factors which are appealing, but the, the absolute um, differentiator is just the level of population growth running through this country. And as I mentioned earlier, that population growth generates demand for underlying real estate, but also real estate credit. Um, and just to unpack that a little bit further, because I think it's a really important differentiator, if you look at the population growth running through Australia, it's forecast to grow um, between 2022-2031 13.4%. Mm. 
So if you compare that to other parts, even just the, the APAC region itself, that's forecast to grow at a 5.4%. So much, much greater of gro rate of growth. And if you compare that to other parts of Europe and so forth, which are essentially flatlining in terms of population, uh, Australia has, has, has got a clear differentiator as, as far as that's concerned. And that's not changing anytime soon. I mean, if you look at the amount of net overseas migration that's come into the country over the course of the past year, um, we're running at unprecedented levels of growth. So uh, 518,000 was uh, the number in terms of positive net overseas migration to, to June 23. Um, now to put that in perspective, in the 10 years prior to, to COVID, that was running at around about 217,000. So a very, very substantial uptick. It's running at unprecedented levels. And whilst there's talk of pulling that back, even the, the forecast, the government forecast for the next financial year, it's still up at around about 375,000. So really strong population growth, driving demand for real estate. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a slowdown anytime soon. Absolutely not. Okay, look, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today, Mark. You're welcome, Sarah. If you've enjoyed this interview, please subscribe to Livewire. Thank you for watching.